I believe that I've tried explaining the dotted line significance of Kolsch in the past, and I'm pretty sure I failed rather miserably. If I succeeded, well, you get to hear the same thing again. And if I failed, well, you get to hear it more correctly this time. <laughs> this is me, Matthew. Today I'll be drinking and enjoying the Rogue Blackberry Honey Kolsch. Smells good. So first off, Kolsch. Kolsch is one of those mixed, um, mixed something. It's a beer that doesn't hold strictly to the ale versus lager divide. A Kolsch beer is brewed warm using ale yeasts, so that's one correct thing, but then it's finished cold in a lagering method. It is lagered to finish. So it's ale yeasts fermented warm and then finished in a lagering process, which is pretty common to, lagering is pretty common to, to German beers in general. The Kolsch is actually, Kolsch in the European Union is registered as a protected label. It has to refer to a beer brewed within 50 kilometers of Cologne, Germany, and, um, and it has to be under the auspices or with the approval of a particular brewery that owns the trademark. So that's what a Kolsch is. It is, or that's how it's constructed at least and how it's defined. Here in the U.S., they're Kolsch style beers. And I don't know how strongly American breweries in general hold to the rules of what a Kolsch is, but you should expect a Kolsch beer to be uh, relatively light, uh, lighter even than a Pilsner, um, lightly hopped, minimal minimal hop character, at least regards like at least regarding the hop bitterness, and uh, they should be really refreshing. They should be kind of smooth like a lager, but also have some ale-like characteristics. Um, slightly cleaner taste. I don't know. I I'm not going to venture what the ale-like characteristics should be. I have a pretty good idea in my mind what lager tastes like, but ale is such a broad category. What is it that defines an ale? Um, more uh, distinct flavors, less muddiness or smoothness uh, throughout the beer, or it's not necessarily a smoothed out beer. Individual ales can be quite smooth, um, and many of them are. Anyways, that's what a Kolsch is. At Rogue, there are several honey Kolsches that they make. I believe they make them using uh, Northwest honeys and Northwest fruits. And this one has blackberry in addition to that honey. Uh, their honey Kolsch is one of my wife's favorites. And this particular beer is thanks to a um, her sister and brother-in-law who found it at Trader Joe's. And after trying our honey Kolsch, we were quite happy with that. And so when they saw another honey Kolsch on the shelves there, they grabbed it and we shared some. Anyways, for this one in particular, I, while I've been talking, I've been smelling this really delicious kind of jammy blackberry. Not not quite, you know, blackberry bush fresh, but definitely a very succulent and sweet blackberry aroma. In fact, um, I would say it might smell like a, a blackberry sparkling water almost, which is kind of interesting. Um, I suppose that goes with Kolsch having a really kind of a clean aroma to it. And sparkling water tends to have a pretty clean aroma and then you add whatever fruits to it. It just smells really good. It smells refreshing and inviting. The jamminess may come from the use of the honey, I would guess. Really depending on uh, the type of honey that's used. So this actually says it's a local wildflower honey and Oregon's finest blackberries. Uh, so wildflower honey is probably the least distinct of the honey flavors. Sometimes um, honeys that are predominantly derived from a specific plant or flower, um, well, flower obviously, <laughs> will have aromas and flavors characteristic of that flower. So for instance, one of my favorite honeys is an orange blossom honey, which has this very delicate, very delicious orange essence character to it. Um, and 
different flowers will have different characteristics. I believe the rules are generally the hives have to be in an area surrounded by this the particular plant and so there's always going to be some volunteer some ad mixing because you can't actually separate out the orange blossom honey from you know, maybe the dandelions growing in the in the vineyard but in general it's going to be mostly orange blossoms wildflower is just going to be kind of generic all the flowers Generally, these will be hives set out in uh, primarily uncared for fields. Here in the Northwest, there are tons of flowers everywhere. I don't know if you can see too clearly, but on my little um, slice of the Northwest here behind me, uh, there has been an explosion of yellow and purple flowers through the spring, and now it's mostly down to yellows, though I have seen a couple new purples in one corner of the, of the area, and some white flowers as well coming up recently. I'm not going to go into all the different types. My wife has been having a field day uh, identifying all the various herbs and things growing up around us, um, but definitely if you put some hives in my property, it would be wildflower honey, all right? So that's the honey story and I'm sticking to it and I'm going to stop talking and drink this thing mm. that's nice okay things I like about this in comparison to another fruit beer I've had recently the peach ale this doesn't necessarily taste just of sweet fruit this has kind of an essence of of um of the blackberry, but it's not sweet at all. It once again kind of goes back to maybe a, a blackberry uh, sparkling water. You know, the, the joke goes with lacrosse, sparkling water, um, sparkling water and a grapefruit sneezed in the room next to it, right? So it's just the finest essence of grapefruit and it pretty much just tastes like sparkling water. So that's kind of what it feels like the raspberry's adding here. It's this really beautiful aroma. And then it's more of a, it's really not a strongly fruity flavor. I think the honey might produce a, possibly a, a mead-like character to this. I'm guessing they used the honey early in the fermentation process, so the yeast was actually allowed to, to chew on it and produce a, a drier um, result. And that might also account for the fact that the ABUs on this are uh, relatively high. Well high for a standard Kolsch. They are 6.2%. I would guess that most Kolsches are between 2 and 4%, traditionally speaking. And this is definitely more of a, uh, a um, well, an American version of that, that's for sure. And some of that might be due to the fact that the honey was involved, and so the yeast had more sugar to eat. I don't think it's, it's really boozy at all. No, it's not boozy. It just tastes like a really nice lightly malty beer with a, a very beautiful but delicate um, fruit aroma and hint of flavor, essence of flavor. And then this kind of middling sweetness, but it's, it's not so sweet as to get fully out of the dry side of the sweet versus dry category. It's still 20% into the, the dry side of that um, of that uh, continuum, that scale, I think it's almost to me like the they use some hops in this that evoke a blackberry plant um, experience. I'm not going to call it a flavor, uh, but it's like there's a, a blackberry plant going on here. There's a greenness to it that goes along with the the just the the real mild subtle uh sweet body and and the blackberry aroma and so it feels it kind of evokes the sense of being out in a blackberry field actually kind of thinking through those different those different flavors i have really good memories going back to when i was a child i grew up in northern california but kind of every other year or every third year we'd alternate um, driving to Texas for summer holidays or driving up to the Northwest for summer holidays. We had friends and family in Texas and friends and a few family up in the Northwest who we would visit. And uh, one of the families down in Oregon had a big pasture. They had maybe 10 acres or something. 
and their their backyard, their pasture had several large blackberry stands. And blackberry is technically a uh, a pest <laughs> here in the Northwest. It's not native, uh, but it grows places and it's a beautiful fruit. And so it's kind of allowed. And so I had these memories of being out in this field and the grass or the hay was mostly mown and the plants would just be, the, the, the vines would just be so full of blackberries and they'd be big and sweet and beautiful. And this beer kind of evokes that. Oh, and there'd be bees flying around because of course, I have one memory of my younger brother while we were visiting their house one time. Uh, I think a bee had gotten into his cup of water or something and stuck him on the lip while he was drinking it. And so, of course, vacation style, we got ice cream afterwards because the ice cream helped, you know, soothe the uh, his really <laughs> inflated lip. <laughs> oh, good memories. Hmm. It's interesting how evocative a beer can be just thinking about that. Um, yeah. I think that that kind of speaks to the the success of this beer for me in particular. Not everybody has memories of um, you know, blackberry bushes, blackberry plants. Not everybody lives in the Northwest, of course. Uh, thank you for all you non-Northwesterners who watch my videos. Uh, but if you have blackberry plants in your memories, you can probably have, you'll probably have some, some idea of that, um, just that summer joy from late July through early August, the, the profusion of berries to be had from those plants and, and the snacking and the purple fingers and purple mouths. And if you're a parent wiping your children down afterwards or uh, tending to their scrapes from the <laughs> nasty spines on those vines. <laughs> hmm. This is a good beer. I enjoy this beer. Because it doesn't go hardcore on the sweetness, that really uh, retains the refreshing character of the beer. There is definitely a sweetness to it. And as it kind of warms a little bit, that sweetness has become more uh, evident. Uh, this beer can be drunk, I, I mean, this is 10, 15 minutes out of the fridge now. Um, and and really it's, it's kind of opened up a lot in that. But it still retains this dry character that makes it really refreshing, really beautiful, really nice on a beautiful summer day. This isn't quite summer yet here, but it sure looks like it and feels like it. Anyways. I am going to be on this pseudo summer day uh, drinking and enjoying very much the rest of this Rogue Brewing Blackberry Honey Kolsch. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>